depending off the vaulting table. I mean, the gymnast then blocks off the vaulting platform in a various twist or somersaults. Um, the post-fight segment, which is also um, uh, recorded, uh, brings the gymnast to her feet. Um, less difficult vaults include a takeoff from both feet or either doing front handsprings off the vaulting table. Uh, the next will be the uneven bars. On the uneven bars, the gymnast performs a time routine on two parallel horizontal bars set at a different heights. Um, these bars are made of fiberglass covered in wood and laminate to prevent them from breaking. In the past, bars were made of wood, but the bars were prone to breaking, providing an incentive to switch to newer technologies. The width and height of the bars may be adjusted to the size needed for the individual gymnast or the gender. Uh, male or female bars are, are not the same if the women do compete on the uneven bars. In the past, uneven parallel bars were closer together than they are today. Um, the bars have moved increasingly further apart, allowing gymnasts to perform a greater swinging and circling transitions, as well as different releases that may pass over, under, and between the two bars. As the bars are uh, closer, you only can, most people will perform very power moves that will put their bodies in a vertical position. At the elite level, uh, movements must pass through the handstand. Um, that's a full handstand before you move to another movement. And the gymnasts often mount the uneven bars using a springboard or a small mat. Um, gymnasts may use chalk and grips. Um, what they consider a grip is a leather strip with holes for fingers to protect their hands and improve their performance. So it keeps the, the meaty part of their hand uh, from getting rubbed raw uh, so they won't uh, drop from the bars. Um, the chalk helps take the moisture out of the gymnast's hands to decrease that friction so they don't rub and prevent rips and tears to the skin. Um, dial grips helps gymnasts grip the bars. And here's another quick video to demonstrate that. Talk the other day about having more anxiety at this point in your career, though, than she did earlier. Well, she has done everything. Last year, after her comeback, she won the all-around in all four events that hasn't been done since 1994, and Dominique Dawes. Won a medal on every single event at the last world. She's got 20 of them. Double twisting double. Much better than night one. Kerr Powell. There you go, six time national all around champion. <laughs> <laughs> and leaves with a statement. Yeah. I would say so. At one time she struggled a little bit on bars, but now she's a world contender on that event and every other one. Great job. Think about the effect she has on a team, too. It's going to be great anyway, but going to Tokyo. Well, and she has been just such an incredible leader for these young women out there. Really the only one with Olympic experience right now, double twisting, double back. And again, after night one, the emotion said it all. And night two, the emotion says it all again. Just a little different, though. All right. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, our next video will be the balance beam or the next uh, event, excuse me, is the balance beam that we'll discuss. And the, in the balance beam, the gymnast performs a core gap routine of up to 90 seconds in length. And that routine consists of leaps, acrobatic skills, somersaults, turns, and dance elements on this padded beam. I mean, the beam is 125 centimeters or four feet, one inch from the ground, um, five meters or 16 feet, five inches in length, and 10.16 uh, centimeters or four inches in width. So that's the uh, dimensions of the balance beam. The balance beam can be adjusted and be raised higher or lower. Again, um, and that's dependent on the event and or gender of the individuals participating and this uh, event requires obviously balance flexibility grace poise and strength 
Uh, now moving uh, to the floor exercise. I'm the. This is the uh, event in gymnastics performed, obviously on the floor. I'm um, in the past. The floor exercise was executed on bare floors or mats, such as wrestling mats. Now um, it's been expanded, uh, and technology has been infused. The floor event now for, uh, occurs on a carpet, uh, 12 by 12 uh, meters uh, in, in dimension. And the carpet consists of a hard form foam over a layer of plywood. So you have uh, basically a small layer of carpet, think of like indoor outdoor carpet, foam, and then plywood underneath it. So it's not your um, average floor. Um, and the reason they do this is um, and that, that plywood is also under springs. Um, so the gymnastics uh, for floor exercises, also known as a spring floor, and that gives you more ultimate bounce and a higher, uh, uh, higher, um, more height on your jumps, excuse me. Um, again, the spring floor provides a firm surface, but it also gives you extra bounce or spring when you compress or really push down into it, want to jump up. And this again allows a gymnast to achieve greater height as well as softer landings after they do a skill. I remember jumping that high in the air and doing a couple twists. If it was just a regular floor, the impact could hurt uh, ankles and or feet. Um, so having this spring floor that gives um, definitely helps in regards to injury. Um, the gymnast, they often perform the core gap routine of the 90 seconds on the floor event. Um, depending on the gymnast level, the gymnast may choose their own routine. Um, they are routines like you can do a 4.5 routine. So the maximum uh, you can get is 4.5 or 8.5 routine or a 9.9 .9 routine that's already been done. If you can do it to the best, you'll get a 9.9, .9, et cetera. Um, also, they have some levels that have compulsory routines or default music can be played as well. Um, levels three to six, the music is the same for each level. However, along with each skill level within the routine, the levels and music is switched. Now, when we look at level six to 10, they're optional and they get to have custom routines made. So in these optional levels, uh, which are custom six through 10, there are skill retirements for each routine, but the athlete is able to pick their own music without any words. Um, the routine should consist of tumbling passes, a series of jumps, dance elements, acrobatic skills, turns, pivots, and you have to do a lot of maneuvers on one foot. And these are the things that are judged. A gymnast uh, has to perform at least four tumbling passes. Each, each of them, each, each pass must include one flight element without hand support, meaning you have to do certain elements uh, while you're in the air um, and they're graded without uh, using your hands to get there. Each level in gymnastics requires an athlete to perform a different number of tumbling passes. So the higher level you get up in gymnastics, the more tumbling passes you'll have to do. And level, level seven in the United States system, a gymnast is required to do uh, two and three uh, passes and in level eight and 10, at least three or four are required. Um, in this video right here, you'll see um, former UCLA dentist, excuse me, UCLA gymnast, Nia Dennis, perform one of her um, uh, floor routines that went viral recently.
All right, so if you analyze that video of Nia Dillon, you see a lot of elements in there. Um, first, if you notice um, the style that's being incorporated in college gymnastics, uh, using uh, hip hop, um, which is also um, due to the increased amount of African-American women that are permeating and dominating the sport of women's gymnastics on a collegiate level. Um, their raw speed, power, and ability to do moves that uh, women couldn't do before um, is letting them dominate the game, not only on the uh, collegiate level, but within the United States uh, Olympic uh, team as well. Um, looking at her routine, she had uh, she was crip walking, she was throwing at West Side, uh, she was doing some uh, Pat Hellenic uh, stepping, as they say, for the sororities. Um, she had uh, hip hop dancing in there, along with uh, also uh, the required gymnastic moves. Um, you can see her coaches as well as her uh, teammates on the side, which we'll discuss later. Uh, again, African American women are dominating in uh, collegiate and uh, gymnastics. Period. So you'll see more and more teams with uh, African American women, and we'll talk about uh, that again later. Um, now let's look at and discuss these African-American gymnasts that we're talking about. The first one I would like to discuss is Diane Durham. Um, Diane Durham was a standout gymnast who in 1983 became the first pick uh, African-American woman to win the United States National Championship. Um, Diane Durham is from Gary, Indiana. Um, Ms. Durham discovered the thrill of gymnastics in early childhood and her parents decided to enroll her and her sister in lessons, helping the girls to burn off excess energy. Um, Ms. Durham uh, was known as a prodigy, and shortly after her 13th birthday, she, be she became one of the few black gymnasts in the world to move to Texas and train under Coach Bella Caroli. Um, Bella Caroli was a Romanian immigrant. Um, he did great things and used to be the um, head of the Romanian Olympic team. And um, again, he uh, moved to the United States. Uh, his most famous pupil was Nadia Comaneci. In the 1976, Olymp 1976 Olympic Games, at uh, 14 years of age, uh, she became known as the first gymnast to receive a perfect 10. Um, the next uh, gymnast I'd like to talk about again, and we saw her already, is Simone Biles. Here's another picture of Ms. Biles showing off her strength. Um, Simone Biles was born on March 14th, 1997. Uh, she's a Texas native. Uh, she has a combined total of 30 Olympic and World Championship medals. Biles is the most decorated American gymnast in the world and the third most uh, decorated gymnast uh, uh, behind Belarus's Vitaly Sherbo, who has 33 medals, and Russia's Larissa Latinina, who has 32 medals. Um, at the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, Biles won the individual gold medals in all around, vault, and floor exercise. She also won a bronze in the balance beam and gold as part of the United States team, who won the team gold when they were dubbed the final five. The next athlete that I would like to show is Nia Dennis, who just watched her um, great floor routine. Nia Dennis was born February 23rd in 1993, and she's a retired American collegiate gymnast. She was a member of the United States national team from 2012 to 2016, and she was in the 2014 Pacific Rim championship team and junior all around and vault silver medalist. She was also a member of the UCLA Bruins uh, team until she just graduated and she is retired from uh, gymnastics upon graduation from college. So congratulations on your uh, graduation, Nia, and all your future opportunities. Um, now, why is this uh, these women growing? And a lot of that has to do with uh, Title IX and HBCUs um, also come into play. Um, again, Title IX emphasizes equal participation at collegiate sports for men as well as women. Um, since football teams are so large, again, they skew the curve and team size. So there's a lot more males that get uh, scholarships due to the size of that team. So a lot of male sports were cut uh, due to Title IX. Um, to add more women's sports, institutions started including 
including HBCUs, or now we're talking about adding um, gymnastics as well. Um, so other uh, schools added gymnastics when wrestling and uh, baseball and other sports were cut for uh, men. Um, there are currently no historically black colleges and universities that have gymnastics programs, despite how prominent black women have become on a national and international scene in gymnastics. Uh, Grambling State University, uh, one of my alma maters, the only place you can be somebody with a fee sheet, um, is set to host the fifth annual Brown Girls Do Gymnastics Conference this July in collaboration with the Doug Williams Center in Ruston, Louisiana at the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. The organization is basically pushing a grassroots initiative to introduce competitive gymnastics, historically black colleges and universities, and provide support to professional gymnasts and circus performers of color. Um, if you look at a picture right here, here is the Brown Girls Do Gymnastics logo, and you can go check out their website named Brown Girls Do Gymnastics. Please look at this quick video that also demonstrates some of the um, activities that Brown Girls Gymnastics would like to um, be a part of. North Carolina a and Aggie Pride, Hampton University. Howard University. H U U N A. Spelman College. A choice to change the world. Florida A M. Now there's state, state, and state. He can. University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Check. Howard University. H U U No. Hampton University. Rock the blue and white. Fan you. We'll strike. And we'll strike. And we'll strike again. Go Rattlers. Jackson State University. The I Love. Happy University. H U U Now. Okay, see in that video, um, they display young girls that are associated with Brown Girls Do Gymnastics. Um, and what uh, universities they would like to represent um, once uh, these HBCU gymnastics teams are started. Um, the reason they're doing this is there's a rich history of athletic excellence as well as academic excellence. And Black first uh, make Grambling State University the perfect home for the first HBCU competitive gymnastics program. And these are words from the current Grambling State University president, Rick Gallo. Um, he also stated the need is clear and we're motivated by the opportunity we can to provide the gymnasts of color uh, with the right partners and sponsors. Um, they are sure they are ready uh, to bring the sport to life, not only on Grambling State's campus, but other historically black colleges and universities and build a platform for young women to advance their athletic and academic pursuits. Um, there's a need for this, um, not only due to um, the next young lady we'll talk about, Tia um, Kayaku, um, you can see her picture right here, but um, there's also been so many other ladies that had the same problems Miss uh, Kayaku had. Um, so just to tell you about Tia's story, um, Tia's from North Carolina, um, Apex actually, which is right outside of Raleigh, and she grew up participating uh, in gymnastics. She excelled at the sport and started her collegiate career at Ball State, but transferred because uh, again, she didn't feel comfortable um, a lot of the women have to deal with uh, more racial tension 
than her black male counterparts do. So she transferred to Alabama. Alabama has a history of being a strong team and also having uh, African-American, not only captains, but, um, you know, leaders and multiple events. At uh, one point at the University of Alabama, uh, she was voted as the program's unsung hero, meaning um, she was like their top gymnast when they needed to get something done or win something. Uh, she needed to do an event that she didn't do. Uh, she would do that. But soon after she left the program in the school after a series of racist incidents that weren't um, uh, investigated or uh, she just didn't feel comfortable anymore at the University of Alabama. The first and most uh, prolific one was when her head coach came up to her and saw the other African-American women on a team and they were at practice one day congregating, just talking before practice started. And the coach who was a, a Caucasian uh, woman came up to them and said, uh, uh, was this the back of the bus referencing, um, you know, post uh, integration where we had to sit on the back of the buses. So in regards to that topic, um, I feel like, again, um, that's one thing that if we look back at, we would look at it a bit differently. Uh, when we integrated, not only we integrated our talent, but our intellectual uh, capital, as well as our economics and which weakened, you know, our pot. But, um, you know, moving back to this, uh, she's left Alabama. And this is the top gymnast at Alabama. She left and quit gymnastics altogether and enrolled at, you know, my alma mater, North Carolina Central University. Uh, when reporters spoke to her there, she said she just wanted to finish out her career uh, uh, academically. Um, again, a lot of the women gymnasts, um, if they're smaller, they have more uh, speed. So they can do the great tumbling routines or they can be taller, such as Tia Kaiku. And um, they face a lot of resentment um, due to the size of their thighs, posterior height, um, their, their muscles, a lot of jokes. You know, they're built like men or uh, animals, um, their hair, how they wear it in practice, a lot of different things. If they congregate together, as you see what happened at the uh, Alabama, University of Alabama, so a lot of these problems are happening, uh, henceforth the initiative uh, to try to get gymnastics at historically black colleges and universities. So um, this won't happen anymore. Um, again, Kiaku, who's now a North Carolina Central preparing to graduate, is hoping that in the future, HBCU gymnastics programs can become a reality so black girls can pursue the sport with so, without so many racist instances that they face um, all the time. Uh, if you would like to look at this last video, uh, then we'll do our closing. Gymnastics is a lot of fear, but you have to overcome that if you want to move on to the next level. The next guest has me totally flipping out. At only 10 years old, she's on the fast track to become the next big Olympics gymnastics superstar. Please welcome today's super kid, Chandler King. She's an all-around athlete. She's there, she works hard, she wants it. She's our baby girl, but she inspires us both. Over 34 hours a week I train. Kids like Chandler, they see what it takes. She's fearless. She's a natural performer. She handles pressure really well. It's about the work to me. My name's Chandler King. I'm 12 years old and I'm a gymnast. I love this sport. I like it a lot better than any other sport. That's why I chose it. At six, that's when it started to become like competitive and I started going to gym more. She was a mentally strong kid. She wants to go out there, she wants to win, she wants to perform. Anyone that's talented and wants to work hard is fun to coach. Brian normally coaches us on bars and vault. Chandler's very, very good on the bars. She's very smooth, she swings a lot. It's very different than the rest of the event. The bars has just come easy to me, so that's why I like it the most. It feels like you're flying. To a person that's never done gymnastics before, it'd probably be really scary for them. But the more you do it, the more you get used to it, and the more comfortable you get with it. Gymnastics is mostly mental and not physical. You have to have the right mindset, and if you don't, then that's when it can become like really hard and scary. Short head in. Oh. The body hurts a lot in the sport. If nobody had injuries, then it would be perfect. But no, it's not like that. 
crying is not gonna help. Getting frustrated like that, that's not gonna help. It's just gonna make it worse. You won't be able to get through anything. So you just gotta like wipe away the tears, go get a drink of water or something, and then try and come back, but keeping a positive attitude. Legs, legs, and keep your head down, head down. Hup. I think we've, we've gotten to the point where we trust the process now. Gymnastics is one of the most well-balanced sports where it brings finesse, power, it brings an array of physical abilities, and it brings mental toughness also. She's extremely self-motivated and independent. She just does it on her own. Any project that she's taking part in it, you can tell that she's going to go after it and she's going to take the extra steps. She's not going to just do enough. I put in all these hours of training and all the tears, the blood, the sweat, the rips on your hands from bars that you get. I put it all in because I love this sport and I do want to represent the USA when I grow older. If that doesn't work, I'd love to go to college. College gymnastics is really fun and it just seems exciting. That's only 31 seconds left. So right now I'm doing my online school. It's Texas Connections. I just finished doing a language arts assessment. 100. Online school, it's a lot of work. Because she's seventh grade, this is new for her. It's her first time doing full-time online school. They have to do about five hours a day in order to be, you know, considered full-time. She usually does that or more. She works on the weekends. She's always been a really hard worker. We're still inspired to this day about her work ethic. We're impressed and it looks like that's gonna carry on into teenage years and it's gonna carry on into adulthood. It's a choice, like it's not us telling her or pressuring her, like it's all her choice. She chooses to do this every day. Most kids have to go to a school and sit down. I just get to be in my, my own environment, so my home, you can sit down and be comfortable. It's all online. If I had to pick between public school and online school, definitely online school. She's always been a really hard worker. She's able to have fun and have a personality and be carefree at the same time. I have 13K on TikTok. I get to perform on TikTok, do little dances, show my personality. Floor routine, I also get to do the same thing. So it all kind of combines together with performing. She can sing, she can dance, she's a people person, she likes to act, she's a natural performer. These are all of my medals that I've had from gymnastics meets and gymnastics competitions. One that I have that I'm most proud of, I got first place on bars, but I could have got a perfect 10-0 because of the dismount. So I did the dismount, and if you stick it, you know that means perfect and everything. But I was like this, and everybody's like, Ooh! and then I took a step. It was so devastating, but luckily I still got first place. That'd probably be my most proud medal because I tried. I don't know why I took that step and I didn't just salute. It's somewhere in here. We made the move here to Texas about three and a half years ago for Chandler to compete here. Her coach back then accepted a job here, and we initially came just for her to do some training for a developmental camp she was getting ready for. And she loved the gym, she loved Texas, and she wanted to stay. And we came here initially just to visit, and I called my mother and I was like, oh, we're not coming back, we mo we're moving here. They sacrificed a lot for me to come down here and do what I love, so we packed up everything, we moved away for me. It goes family, school, then gymnastics. School is more important than gymnastics. School comes first. But yeah, family is everything. That's what you need. The one thing that I noticed since we moved here is that she has fun. Her friends are there, her team. There are a lot of girls here who are her age. Everybody there, we all just get along. I don't have really a group. I just talk to everybody. Everybody's my friend there. At this age, they're not thinking about it. They're just all friends. The parents are more competitive and the girls are just out there doing their best and having fun and cheering each other on. Come on, go, go, go. It's still nice to cheer them on and everything, but when you're competing, it's like, okay, I'm trying to beat you. I love performing. If I wasn't doing gymnastics, I'd probably want to be a dancer. That comes next, because it's still in the performing range, but it's not as much flipping and everything. It's more graceful. I have the body type for a dancer. It's nerve-wracking when I'm performing in front of so many people, but it also, like, your adrenaline gets pumping, and then you go and it's not as bad as you thought it would be. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I definitely have become a better gymnast. I've learned a lot of new skills, a lot of new techniques and better form. If she were to go to the Olympics, that would be great. This whole sport, of course, it's a huge investment. College scholarship definitely would be great. Whatever she wants 
to do. We both support her 100%. She's a gymnast, but she's not just a gymnast. Whatever she chooses to do, we would support her. I want her to put her best foot forward and for her to get out of life what life has for her. My thing is we're going to provide the resources if you're ready to take advantage of them. The sky is the limit as far as our end of support. Gymnastics really fits me. I feel like it's just meant for me. That's my sport. Like everybody has their sport that they like to do. 171K on Instagram. That's how many followers I have. I have like 600. What, what, what should I do? <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> Don't give up. Keep trying. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so thank you. Um, in that video right there, you see the aspirations of uh, young girls that want to be the next Simone Biles or, or Nia Dennis. Um, in closing, i just like to give a message to all the young ladies that uh, will watch this um, in the future and who are watching it now um, and anybody else in particular that this message relates to. If you don't like it, build your own. Uh, if you look at sports, not only in um, advocacy, but also standing out uh, for different rights, women are doing this at the forefront, not our men. So again, they need to be uh, applauded for that. Um, but uh, basically what we're saying is, is build these programs at your own schools so that you don't have to fight uh, against all these battles and have a, a more peaceful um, educational experience. Um, safe places are important for everyone and they will help our men and women reach their potential as well as compete collegiately on the highest level um, for a school that's not just exploiting you for their athletic ability. Um, these programs uh, will take the inner city kids who are flipped for fun in the situations where they can monetize their skill and also improve it. Um, so all the, um, the young ladies and the young men who are uh, flipping in the inner city or mattresses or um, different areas or hills and grass, um, there's uh, gymnastics programs coming for you, the women first, and then our men will uh, become second. I historically black colleges and universities. So by the time you get to college, hopefully there'll be at least six up and running. Again, thank you for tuning in this, this week's episode of Sports 101. I'm your host, Jamar Hart. Be sure to follow me on social media at Twitter, uh, Coach underscore Hart 412, and Facebook under Jamar Hart. Please get social with Sports 101 and the litany of Sports Zone Chicago's other shows. You can follow Sports Zone Chicago on Twitter at Sports Zone CHI, Facebook at Sports Zone Chicago, and Instagram at Sports Zone Chicago. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Sports Sports Zone Chicago. But more importantly, please download the Sports Zone Chicago app. The Sports Zone Chicago app can be found on the iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon stores. Again, thank you for coming out on this week's journey of Sports 101. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next week at our normally scheduled time, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm your host, Jamar Harp, and I'm gone. Let's get back to normal. How do we do that? Wear a mask, wash your hands, stand six feet apart, get tested, and most important, roll up your sleeve and get the shot. Get the shot. Get the shot. Get the shot. I got 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 the shot, and so should you. 